Good morning, everyone. Did everybody bring their pastries to be blessed or for Father? No, that's okay. Let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate St. Joseph, the patron of the church and of all of us, the universe, of the sick, the dying, of terror, protection. So let us call to mind our sins, the times where we may not have had the courage that Joseph showed, and let us ask God for love, mercy, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us gather all of our prayers together into one. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation whose beginning you entrusted in this faithful care through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise you up, your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm and our response is, the son of David will live forever. The son of David will live forever. The promise of the Lord I will sing forever through all generations. My mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness for you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. The son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever 
will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The son of David will live forever. He shall say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. The son of David will live forever. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations, he is our Father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the Father of many nations, according to what was said, Thou shall your descendants be, that is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The verse before the gospel. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They never cease to praise you. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When the mother of God was betrothed to Jesus, or to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, as we go throughout this year celebrating St. Joseph, this year of St. Joseph, and as he even ties into our parish where we personally are celebrating the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We are reminded in this beautiful gospel passage from Matthew that Joseph heard the voice of God. God asked him to take Mary, to care for her, 
to care for her son and to protect her. Some of people may ask, well, why was this so important that Joseph take Mary? If you remember in the times when this scripture was written, anyone who had a child out of marriage would have been stoned to death. And so this was a very huge concern for Joseph, the protection of Mary. And that's why he says he was going to divorce her quietly so that it could be a private family marriage or family affair and that Mary would be protected. But Joseph was called the son of David and he was instructed not to be afraid. As we know those first years of Jesus's life, it was Joseph, his foster father, not only who cared for him and his mother, but also protected the child. We know that Joseph was woken once again after Jesus was born and told to take the child and Mary and to flee the land. In the midst of the darkness, Joseph did just that. How easy it is for us to go from place to place with GPS, our cars tell us exactly where to go. I remember younger years ago, we used to print out the directions on MapQuest and carry them with us. But all this was done through the grace of God. There was no GPS. There was no directions. It was just the Holy Spirit leading Jesus, Joseph, and Mary into the land so that Jesus can be protected. We don't hear too much about Jesus's upbringing, but we do know, or we can infer, that because of the upbringing between Mary and Joseph, because they loved this child so much that they made sure he was committed to God and to trust in God. My brothers and sisters, as we go throughout this day, as we go throughout the remainder of this year of St. Joseph and of the Holy Family, let us be mindful of the very courage that Joseph had in his heart after the Lord said, do not be afraid. If you and I have that same courage and that same faith, then you and I will combat anything that is put in front of us. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, may we be blessed always. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Joseph is the model of humble and one of obedient faith. So with trust in our merciful God, we offer him the prayers and petitions. For me as your pastor, for all priests that conformed in the image of Jesus Christ, our eternal high priest, they may serve with courage and joy, we pray to the Lord. For our governor, for our president, and for all governmental leaders, May they be given wisdom to act with justice as they serve their people and protect human rights. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have been affected by the coronavirus, may God protect them from needless anxiety and bring them health in mind and body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered around this altar on this feast day of St. Joseph, May the Lord help us to hear the invitation to follow him and give us strength to do so, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially those we keep close to our hearts, may their faith be credited to them as righteousness, so as to be welcomed into the kingdom of our Heavenly Father, we pray to the Lord. For the special intentions of this Mass, which be, is being offered to all fathers of St. Mary's Parish, and for those own intentions which we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we bring you these prayers today, confident in your plans to bring good to us and in our world. Hear and answer them, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Now the mystery of the swallowing wine, in which you're in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served your love, with loving care for your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and to bless you. For this just man was given by you to be the spouse of the Virgin Mother of God and sent as the wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life 
that may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Meet us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be received for eternal life.
Well done, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. After our prayer to St. Michael, and the, after the closing prayer, we'll, have our, we'll pray our litany of St. Joseph. So through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, let us pray for peace in our hearts and our families and the protection against Satan and evil in the nation. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, let us pray. Defend your unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray. The family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ hear us. God the Father of heaven. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Holy Mary. Saint Joseph illustrious son of David, light of the patriarchs, spouse of the mother of God, chaste guardian of the virgin, foster father of the son of God, watcher, defender of Christ, heed of the holy family, Joseph most just, Joseph most chaste, Joseph most prudent, Joseph most valiant, Joseph most obedient, Joseph most faithful, mirror of patience, lover of poverty, model of the workmen, glory of domestic life, guardian of virgins, pillar of families, solace of the afflicted, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of the Holy Church, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He made him the Lord of his household. Now we bless the St. Joseph's altar, which carries the book of all those who have died in our parish.
Let us pray. O oh God, who in your infallible providence was pleased to choose blessed Joseph to the spouse of your most holy mother, grant that we may venerate him as our protector on earth, that we may be worthy to have him as our intercessor in heaven, who with live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.